Hello, welcome to Bagre TV. If you are new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Top 6 African Kings Dethroned by the Colonialists The worst thing that colonialism did was to cloud our view of the past. Barack Obama. This quote shares the view of Walter Rudney, who slammed colonialists for underdeveloping Africa. It is true that pre-colonial Africa had an ancient form of civilization that was based on the cultures and traditions of the people. But the Europeans came, mostly the Brits and the French. They came and distorted Africa's organization and imposed on Africans theirs. In pre-colonial Africa, the people had a way of sharing stories through oral tradition, had architectural masterpiece yet in existence till now. Colonialism in Africa started in the 19th century when slave trade became the end thing. It all started in 1884 at the Berlin Conference when the European big wits scrambled for Africa. They partitioned Africa and divided it between themselves as though African countries were pieces of yam. British and French had more colonies. As expected, they were faced with resistance, especially from the already existing traditional machinery in place. The colonialists knew that the only way to conquer most of these places was through force. They employed the use of force to either kill or send on exile some of these rulers. In most of these colonies, the kings were not doing badly as a matter of fact. They brought development to their kingdoms, but the Europeans, for their selfish interests, came in the name of civilization to destroy the beauty that existed in Africa and its culture. Most of these kings are dead and gone, but they can never be forgotten. In this video, we'll be talking about African kings that were displaced by the colonial masters. Number 6. King Seshuayu He is known as Zulu legend. He was the king of Zulu kingdom from 1873 to 1879, the half-nephew of Zulu king Shaka. He led the Zulus to fight against the British in the Anglo-Zulu 1879. After his defeat, the kingdom became incorporated into the British colonial holdings. Eventually, it became the modern-day South African province of KwaZulu Nata. So, Ayo Kampandi can never be forgotten in Zulu's history. Number 5. King Prempe Asantehene of Ashanti Kingdom. Prempe Asantehene was the king of the Ashanti people, one of the popular groups in the then Gold Coast, now Ghana. He was the 13th ruler of the Great Kingdom and he became a king at a very tender age, succeeding his father. It was said that he was 16 when he was crowned and he is remembered as one of the fiercest and strongest wield ruler of the kingdom. He was the last ruler of Ashanti kingdom before it went under British rule. King Prempe was labelled a notorious leader by the British and was defeated in the war in 1894 to 1896. After the defeat, himself, mother, relatives, and chiefs were sent on exile to Seychelles. Number 4. King Jaja of Okubo King Jaja's full name was Jubo Juboha. He was a merchant prince and a founder of Opobo City, a place in an area that is now River State. At the age of 12, he was sold as slave in Borni. He took the name Jaja because of his dealings with the British government. After the Berlin Conference in 1884, Okubo became a British territory. Jaja refused collecting tax from dealings he had with the British after he was warned and in 1887, he was called for his so-called negotiations. Later arrested, tried in Ghana and sent to Spain on exile. Number 3. Sheikh Khalid bin Bagash al Busaid of Zanzibar, Tanzania Sheikh Khalid, popularly known as Sultan, was the sixth ruler of Zanzibar. He was an influential and powerful leader. Sultan was greatly fed home and abroad and never tolerated any form of attack. One of the reasons why he resisted the British who had settled on the island of Zanzibar and started to take control by 19th century. And by 1866, the British had created a treaty that stated that the Sultan must get their approval before ruling. He felt offended and the result was the Anglo-Zanzibar War of 1886. During the invasion of his palace, he escaped into German East Africa and was granted political asylum. Number 2. Wangantu of the Buganda Kingdom Wangantu was the king of Buganda Kingdom and an ally of King Chatu. He reigned from 1884 to 1897 and was the 31st ruler. There were many reasons why Mwangatu and Chuatu were feathers of a feather. They shared certain similarities aside their style of ruling. They both had become kings at the tender age of 16 and also resisted British rule. The British forced him to sign a treaty under Lugard's rule 
and in 1897, he declared war on the British to take control back, but was defeated. Number one, King Chua II, Kabalega of Bunyuru Kingdom, Uganda. King Chua II, as he's popularly known, reigned from 1870 to 1899 in Bunyuru Kingdom. King Chua II was fierce but a visionary leader who led the kingdom to development. During his reign, he developed a trading system which brought in more wealth for his kingdom. He was one of the African kings that used all he had to resist colonialism and Christianity. For this reason, the British made him an enemy. The British declared war on his kingdom in 1894 and went into hiding to plan an attack. He was found and shot in 1899, captured and exiled into Seuches. Imagine if these kings were allowed to rule their kingdoms without victimization by the European powers. We are certain that Africans would have had its own distinctive form of civilization, just like the Black Panther film has shown. Do you think Africa would have been better without colonialism? Let us know in the comment section. If you like this video, please share and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.